Chefs of Reddit, what do we all need to stop ordering? Part 2. Not a chef, was a waitress, but if you don't know what an ingredient is, please ask. Especially if you have dietary requirements. I got screamed at by a vegetarian couple because I made them eat meat for the first time in 15 years. They ordered the pea and pancetta soup, without knowing what pancetta was, and without telling me they were vegetarians. I was expected to somehow read their minds and know they were vegetarian and warn them. One of my friends had a customer that was vegan, and told her. She ordered a vegan pasta dish but when she brought it to her the lady asked if it was gluten-free pasta. When my friend asked if she couldn't eat gluten she replied, yeah I said I was vegan. I had to confirm with my friend that the woman was an idiot and that's two different things because she herself got confused due to how stupid that was. I eat a vegan lifestyle and people like that make us look like psychopaths. Also being vegan with no gluten, you might as well go eat the grass outside. How boring. A friend of mine had celiac disease and she's decided to go vegan. When she told me the look on her face spoke to the eons of frustration she was putting herself through. That sounds extremely difficult. So much of the protein found in vegan dishes these days is seitan, which is pretty much pure wheat gluten. I used to hate this. The biggest one was quesadillas, this was at an Applebee's where I was a waitress, because they contained pico de gallo. People didn't realize that contained jalapeno even though the menu said so, and would complain when they got their food that it was spicy. It happened so freaking often I started asking, spicy or not spicy, and I would just sub tomato for the pico for people who said not spicy. The pico de gallo at Applebee's is too spicy for some people? I had someone with a nut allergy not tell me until he asked about his soup I set down, all good there, but the appetizer they ordered most definitely did and after a moment of realization I let him know that. Now, not a huge deal overall and he was nice but my thought was, I could have killed this man all because he didn't tell me about this allergy. I did not care for that. I work at a Cajun restaurant, and a few weeks ago I had a table completely order their appetizer and all their entrees, then pull me aside after everything was already sent to the kitchen. Apparently one of the guys was highly allergic to bell pepper, and he wanted to check that everything he ordered was safe. A staple of Cajun food is using celery, onion, and bell pepper as the spice trinity for everything. I just kind of looked at him and point blank told him nothing on our menu was safe except maybe cheese fries if he gets them without seasoning. At this point, he was taking a huge bite of the appetizer, which had visible bell peppers on the inside. He had to immediately get up to go use his EpiPen in the car. If your allergy is that F asterisk C King bad, maybe let someone know. The person with the allergies was munching away on the food, and was asking about the allergens at the same time? He probably will not live long enough to propagate his immense streak of optimism. Not only that, but he used the EPI pen, you are supposed to go to the ER afterwards as the dose may not last long enough while the allergen digests and more doses could be needed. Did he go to the hospital? My best friend in high school was allergic to shellfish, but he loved them. Once a year they would get a huge order oyster or something, they'd finish eating then use the EPI pen, the go straight to the hospital. It was impressed by his commitment to endanger his life for the taste of mollusks. Had a girl I was dating do that. I show up with a jar of peanuts I've been snacking on and her flatmates flip a sh asterisk t. Turns out that for months of cooking together I'd avoided killing her by pure luck. What the f asterisk c king sh asterisk t? What is wrong with people? Here is this super common thing that can kill me. I feel the best course of action for me is to not tell people who can really easily expose me to it that it might kill me. It's practically suicide at that point. I'm allergic to peanuts, but it's an unusually mild allergy for peanuts, I get itchy and I throw up a lot, but that's literally it. And guess what?
I still warn people when I'll be cooking with them, when we're out for desserts, or if I'm going to a place that uses them frequently in cooking, like Thai places, because I don't like throwing up. How can they not feel the same way about dying? Maybe they never died before so they don't know how much they don't like it. Something tells me they have unknowingly eaten animal products a lot of times if they didn't know pancetta was. I'm vegetarian and try to be fastidious about it and still get caught out by drinks sometimes. A surprising number of alcoholic drinks are made using animal products in the fining process. There's a variety of possibilities for the exact material, ranging from gelatin to the swim bladders of fish. Exactly. And soups are not commonly vegetarian, even if they don't have meat as an ingredient. The stock is often chicken or beef. Former steak and shake cook here, the 7x7 burger. Seven patties with seven slices of cheese stacked on top of each other on a bun. A pain to make and an easy way to cardiac arrest increase your waistline and damage your digestive tract. There was so much grease that we had to leave the stack of patties and cheese to drain on a different plate first so that it wouldn't turn the bun into a new state of matter between solid and liquid, the comments have informed me that it's called a colloid. By the way, one person cooks all the patties, two on rush hours. Zero to two more add condiments. That person may not make a penny over minimum wage and never gets tipped. Edit, fixed it. I eat at Steak and Shake all the time and didn't even know this was a thing. I was eating with a couple of friends when we learned of them. The waitress brought a tray with three of them out to another table. We asked what they were in wonderment. The three of us decided to get it. By the time we left, we had inspired a table of four to try them. That was at least 70 patties in 40 minutes. How do you go from, I was going to go with a usual double cheeseburger, but you know what eating 3.5x my normal portion sounds good. You've obviously never found yourself at steak and shake drunk at 2.30 am. My old boss used to love that. He claimed to be a power lifter and would eat insane amounts of calories a day to bulk up. It didn't work out that way for him though. Cultivating mass. Stop cultivating and start harvesting. But I'm healthier than Dennis, despite diabetes? My friend said he would take me to this restaurant where you could eat for free if you ate their 600 grams burgers, so I cooked up a kilo of meat at home to practice, I split it in half and ate it, a little bit later I ate the other half, let's just say I was feeling sadness right then. Swordfish, dot all fish can have parasitic worms. But swordfish can be riddled with them. Let's just say it's pretty unappetizing. Used to work at a fish market. Only every once in a while would we find a worm in it, but swordfish worms are disgusting. I found nematodes in cod and haddock quite often. Don't even get me started on flounder. The flounder is loaded with nematodes. I never once saw worms in any redfish though. Edit, I just remembered, watch out for fish fillet from McDonald's too. I did security for one of their batter suppliers, and they had a book labeled Fish Filet Complaints. Nematodes my friends. A guy the first used to work with told us about this time he went fishing with his college friends. He basically self-challenged that he was going to take a bite out of the first fish they caught as soon as he caught it. Well, it was a flounder and he bit into its spine. Well a month later he's got fever and chills and I think he said shaking a little. So the doctors are asking if he ate anything weird in the last few days. He said no because a month had passed and he thought nothing of it. Well, according to him he sneezed and blew his nose and there was a fish scale in his snot. So now he has his aha moment and the doctors are like, you dumbass, and gave him some pills to kill the parasites riddling his body. And the doctors are like, you dumbass, and gave him some pills to kill the parasites riddling his body. Modern medicine is truly marvelous. Well, according to him he sneezed and blew his nose and there was a fish scale in his snot. 
I thought something smelled fishy about all this. He had a large scale infection. Back in my bow days, I was breaking down a halibut that was almost as big as me, do an image search if you think I'm exaggerating. I was portioning steaks and cut through some f asterisk sea king vile worm that was about the size of a typical carrot. Needless to say, I almost hurled and haven't eaten halibut for years. Man, I was thinking about cutting back on my meat intake and adding more fish but uh now I'm not so sure lol. What's Bo? And also, I'm horrified. I've never worried about worms in my seafood until now. Back of the house and front of the house refer to positions in a restaurant. Bo as kitchen work, and FOH as customer facing work. When you work in a restaurant, you either work back of house or front of house. Back of house being kitchen, prep, dishes, front of house being host per bar, wait staff. I've seen worms in salmon a few times. Yep, I bought some salmon last summer that had worms in it. I didn't know till after I took a bite. It was an uncomfortable 24 hours. Turns out that worms in salmon are becoming more common these days. Why though? Are worms becoming more common? I've never even thought of worms in fish before this thread. It's the reason that sushi-grade fish has to legally be frozen for a certain period before it's allowed to be served. That's the way they kill off any possible parasites. It's also not just frozen, but very frozen, much more so than your average home freezer can do. Edit, I should mention the legality of it depends on the state so my statement isn't totally accurate. The FDA has guidelines but they aren't always enforced. Oh, wow, I learned something new. Guess I've never really given it much thought but I just assumed sushi-grade fish was fresh and never frozen. When this was a new law in Ontario, the sushi restaurants pushed back hard. Something about customers not wanting to come anymore or due to the freezing destroying the taste. Considering our sources of fish are pretty damn far, I'm glad this is in place. Also, don't notice much difference before and after the law. I remember I was watching a show, I think it was, The Mind of a Chef, but I'm not sure, and they go to one of the best, if not the best, sushi chefs in Tokyo. He mentions all he uses is frozen fish because it tastes better, frozen with certain characteristics, not Walmart frozen. It's actually pretty amazing how intricate the procedure is. I live along the coast of the northern Atlantic and if you spear a sushi grade tuna or the like, you have to bleed it by slicing it up carefully and dragging it behind the boat with a rope to get the blood out. Once it's cleaned of blood, you stuff the entire thing with ice, throw it into an insulated fish bag, cover it with more ice, take it to the local fishery and they'll have it on a plane to Japan in a matter of hours. Farmed fish as well. Having a large population live on top of each other in their own poop soup increases the prevalence of parasites and worms. But you can cook out the parasites, right? Even better, unlike single-cell organisms, parasites freeze to death. Barring premium exceptions, fish gets frozen when caught, so as a consumer if there was already a health risk, it gets eliminated there. Most fish in the US are flash frozen often on the boat to kill parasites and preserve freshness. Most fresh fish is just thought out fish on display. All sushi is also legally required to be frozen except for tuna. I used to work at an Irish pub seven years ago. We had a bud spud and steak, get a beer, get a potato and get a steak for like 10 bucks for a fundraiser, someone attended and asked for a half steak well done, and half rare, medium rare but she didn't want it cut in half, wanted the steak whole. I was able to kinda do it, half the steak was hanging off the side of the grill, cooking each side one at a time, but she sent it back, wasn't cooked right. Boss got mad at me cuz I didn't cook the steak two different ways right. It was a shish asterisk tty day. So yeah, avoid asking for a stupid f asterisk c king steak order, please. Edit, wow I did not expect this to blow up. 
I saw a bunch of the same questions so I am going to answer here, one. She did mean half and half the steak lengthwise, not just, one side of the steak rare, other side well done, she actually wanted the left side of the steak rare and right side well done. 2. My boss lost the business because people under the age of 18 snuck in and the liquor commission caught them. He had about 50k in penalties and had to leave the country because he had zero cash, I was gone by this time thankfully. He was the cheapest boss on the planet and wanted to make any amount of money he could, which is why he was mad. 3. People ask why I actually made the order because I wanted to make the customer happy. 4. The steak came back, cut open not eaten. I ate the steak afterward lol. How is a request like that, not just a hard no? Lol, my boss was the cheapest mother of asterisk CKER on the planet, if it meant getting one dollar more then anything was worth the try. Mr. Krabs of the pub scene. What the actual F asterisk CK? Yep, I still bring it up with my friends today as the most absurd thing ever. You're a saint for even trying. I'd have just said that's impossible and to grow the F asterisk CK up. Yeah I wanted to try at least, I mean no harm in trying was my thought process, which was wrong to think lol. This is highly dependent on the quality of the restaurant, but a good rule of thumb is not to order stuff that is out of character with the rest of the menu. Every restaurant menu has a general theme for their food. That could be based on region or dietary limitations or main course, steakhouse for example, or whatever. A lot of places will also have a couple of things that break that theme so the picky eaters in the group have something to order. That stuff will often be made with older ingredients, and by people who aren't used to making it since it comes up so rarely in a night. Sounds like that's what happens on Kitchen Nightmares, goes to Steakhouse I'll have the duck, please. Thank you. Cooks be like, wait duck. No one orders a duck at a steakhouse. But if the owner wants it on the menu. Meal comes out to a table, Gordon inspects it looks, dot dry, old, takes a bite, chews it, spits it out on a napkin excuse me, miss? Could you ask the chef as the duck is fresh? The waitress goes into the kitchen with plate Gordon wants to know how old the duck is. Chef looks at it well, ya yeah, know, it's frozen fresh. We got it weeks ago but froze it right away, so ya know, it's, fresh. The waitress comes back he said it was frozen right after they got it, so it's fresh. Bloody hell. Edit, 5k upvotes, what? I fell asleep writing this and didn't even get to the point of it, though I'm sure fans of show got the gist of it. Nearly all the eps of KH always have Gordon minimizing the menu and keep it simple with fresh ingredients. Lots of times he seems to order what a restaurant is known for, or seems to order stuff that normally doesn't sell as much, which this post is about, if it isn't ordered a lot, you'll get old food since the restaurant would rather sell below mediocre tasting food than simply throw it out. To be fair even the specialties of the restaurant are really bad most of the time on kitchen nightmares. Other than mama cherries. He downed that sh asterisk t. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe below. To support our channel please click the link below. We're also working on future videos, if you are interested in those make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future content. Thank you.